So here's a close-up view of the planter and as you could see it could also be used for a container. And I'm going to show you how you can make it for any size container. And to do so you start at the bottom with a single crochet circle and it's increased very symmetrically all the way around. So once you get the hang of the increases you can make this bottom as big as you want and then decide when you want to start up the sides. So to get started I'm going to be using this um, smoke blue color and then white for a contrasting color. So I'm going to use a size K crochet hook and I'm working on the bottom. Don't worry about this right now. This is the um, little slip stitch edge I did at the end and I'll show you how to do that. So you want to make a slip knot and to do so you make a loop like this. That top strand you fold across the back like this and then reach in and grab that strand. You'll notice you have a knot side and a slip side. So just pull on the knot side. And then when you put the loop on your hook you pull on the slip side so it should be like this. So to start a single crochet circle you just chain two, one, two, and then you work six single crochets into the second chain from hook. So this is the first chain and that's the second chain. So you can go in this top loop or you can go in the back loop here or go in two loops. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to go in the back loop behind those two strands there. There's a back loop right here. So I'm going to work six single crochets into that strand into the back loop of the chain. So there's four, five, and six. And I'm going to work over the end of my starting chain because this yarn is so thick it's rather difficult to sew in the end. So if you can, um, if you can, if you can um, crochet over them that's better. Okay, now I'm done with round one. I have one, two, three, four, five, six single crochets and I want to use the contrasting yarn to mark the end of each round. So I'm just going to take the contrasting color right here and just lay it on this side of the last single crochet that I worked and then I'm going to work into the first single crochet of this round and let that strand be sandwiched between the last stitch and the first stitch of round two. So I just leave it laying there and I'm going to go ahead and work two single crochets into the first single crochet that I worked for round one. So this is becomes my marker here and then I just want to work two single crochets in each single crochet around. So I'm going to increase from 6 single crochets to 12. Okay, so right now to count I have, I'm going to use a smaller crochet hook here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So now this stitch marker I can either take the front piece and move it to the back or I can bring the back piece forward. It doesn't really matter but I'm going to take the front piece, move it to the back and I just want to lay it next to the last stitch of round two now before I do the first stitch of round three. So in round three I'm going to work two single crochets. That's an increase and then I'm just going to work one in the next one and then two and then one and then two, 
and then one. So basically I'm increasing every other stitch. And every single round I am increasing by six single crochet stitches. So you just do two, one, two, one all the way around. And your repeat should end with just one single crochet. Since I started here with two, it goes all the way around two, one, two, one. So you should end with two, one. And there should just be a one at the end. So now to mark the end and the beginning of the next round, I'm just going to move my strand from the back to the front like this and go ahead and work two in round four. Just like that. So in the previous round, I uh, in round one I had six and then I increased by six so I had 12 on round two and then I had 18 on round three and now I'm going to do two and then one and one. So I'm going to increase every third stitch. So two and then one and one. Two. Sometimes when I'm counting I go double double one one double double. <laughs> I'm sure everybody has different ways of keeping track of the counting. So you want to just, it's very symmetrical. Now it's two, one single and one single and then an increase. And then one and one and then an increase. One and one. So if you come up on a knot like this, this is just normal in uh, manufacturing of yarn. It, it's never perfect. I would just I would test it and make sure it's tight enough to keep. If not, you would just cut this knot out and retie it and leave long ends so you could sew that end in. But if it's really sturdy, I just try to uh, manage it so that it's going to be on the wrong side. And especially for this project, it because it's a um, little you know cover for your plant um, container. You won't see this little this on the wrong side. So I am working everything on the right side and everything on this side will be considered the wrong side. So the knot needs to be over there on the wrong side. So I had two, one, one and there I'm, I'm, that's the end of round four. And then that's 24 single crochets. And then I move my marker again from the front to the back this time. And then I'm going to work two and then one, one, one. So now it's every fourth one I'm going to be increasing. And you're, you'll notice if you look at this real close, every increase is landing up on the first um, single crochet of the increase of the previous round, if that helps you too. See there's my two right there and I'm doing my two for this round in the first one of that one. So you just keep going and in, um, just putting one more stitch between the increases. And so you can keep doing the circle for as, as wide as you need it and it's going to stay relatively flat like this is. So that's how flat this stays. So just keep going around and uh, make your bottom as big as you need it to be for your plant cover. If you want to make a bigger um, container and just use this as a, a cute little, you know, container for stuff. Um, but anyway, I'll come back on camera and I'll show you how to start up the sides. So I finished um, five rounds and I'm going to mark 
the next round. You can always see my, my uh, strand here, my stitch marker. I can pull this up like this, but you don't want to pull it too much because you don't want it to slide out. At the very end when I'm done, I just pull the whole thing out. But right now, I'm going to pull that up so I could bring it over to the side. Now, when you reach the diameter of the circle for the bottom that you need, the next round is worked even, no increasing. And instead of going under both loops, you just go in the back loop. So this is considered the front loop here. And then this is considered the back loop. So you're going to just go in the back loop all the way around. like that. So continue doing that and I'll be right back. Okay that round it was worked completely in the back loop all the way around and what that does is it creates a definition for the bottom between it. It's a de defining the bottom from the sides. So now what you want to do is move your stitch marker where from front to back or back to front whichever you're on and I'm going to move mine to the back like this and now instead of going the back loop I'm just going to continue on in both loops like this. Okay so now what I want you to do is just keep crocheting even and when I got to my back loop, my back loop you could see it underneath here. I'm, I go back and I put a little slip stitch here which I'll show you how to do. But this is my first round of the side that was done in the back loop right here. And then I did one, two, three, four, five, six more rounds in the main color and then I changed to my contrasting color for two rounds and then I did one, two, three more main color and then the last one in contrasting color. But you can do this however you want. You can have the same color, you can have a ton of different colors and your pot may be taller or shorter than mine so just kind of plan um, the colors and uh, you'll know after your first one and try to start out with a really small pot to start out with so you get an idea how many rows it's going to take to go up the side. So um, I'm just going to do mine short just so I can change colors and show you um, how to do that and I'll come back on camera after I've got a couple of rounds done on that. So go ahead and just keep going up the side until you want to change a color but do at least two or three rounds in um, main color and then I'll come back on camera with a couple more rounds done and I'll show you how to change your colors um, and finish off the side. I have completed three rounds of my side. Uh, there's one round in the back loop and then two in both loops. And I'm at the last stitch of round three and now I want to show you how to add a second color. Wherever you want you can do this. So to add a second color you take the contrasting color and you make a slip knot like I showed you in the beginning and then you put that, you work the last single crochet stitch of the round that you want to add the new color on the next round. You work it till there's two loops on your hook and you would, this is like the last stitch of round three and normally I would just yarn over and pull through both to finish it but I'm gonna put the slip knot of the new color on there and bring that and finish the last stitch of my round three with the new color like that. And then I want to pull this tight here and then I just continue on. I still want to move my stitch marker here and then I just continue on with the new color working single crochet. See how smooth that is? So I just come here and work with the new color all the way around just like that. So you can just change back and forth whatever color you want to use. So that's all I did. I used both colors there. Um, that's all I did here when I added a new color. 
So I'm going to finish this round and then I'll come back around and show you how to pick up the main color if you wanted to um, do like stripes. Okay, this is the last stitch of my contrasting color round and I'm going to do the same thing on the very last stitch. I'm going to leave the last two loops. I'm not going to yarn over and finish that single. I am going to drop this to the inside and pick up my blue strand, which is my main color like this. I'm going to yarn over with the main color like that and then mark the move my marker for my stitch marker like that to the front and then continue on with the blue. So you just keep changing back and forth like that and carry your color on the wrong side. Just like that. So you just continue around in single crochet and you um, just keep swapping out your colors however you want to do it. At the very end, when you get over to here, let's say you finish the last single crochet of your entire um, cover here, what you want to do to finish off is just, well, let's go back and pretend that we're just going to finish off with the white. Let me see this white here. You're going to do your last single crochet, then you're going to join with a slip stitch in the first stitch of the of this round, just like that. And then you're going to cut this and then pull that through. You don't normally I do like a chain, but this is so bulky I don't think you want to do that because it'll stick out. So now you just take this end and use your crochet hook. I tried a needle and it does not work and you just feed this end back into your piece. So that's how you get your ends in. Now let me show you how to do the bottom part. So when you get completely done too, you don't need this marker anymore and you can just pull on it and it'll come out. Okay, so uh, you don't have to do this little round like right here, but sometimes it adds a nice little touch to it. So you start out with a slip knot again like this. And this time you're going to have your slip knot on your hook, go into any one of these loops from your unused loops of your um, from when you did that round for the back loop and you just pull this through here and then pull that through the loop on your hook. And then the slip stitch you just go like this and bring that through. So in a single crochet you're yarning over and drawing through two but there's no yarning over. You're just bringing that loop through this loop. And the opening of your my container is facing me so that the loops show up the best. See so like that. So it creates a ridge. So you just go all the way around then you end up doing the little slip stitch right here in the same slip, slip stitch is joining and then just tie these together and weave in the ends. But that's how you make the um, planner cover and the links to everything are listed below and I want to thank you very much for watching. Draw up a loop, draw through two, draw through one. Yarn over. Or if you accidentally drop it, those um, loops won't fall off your hook. So now I'm going to continue on. Skip that one, pick up this one, skip.